Hello and welcome to the Fairy Little Podcast. I'm Marsha, also known as Fairy Little, and this is my podcast about knitting. Today we're going to be talking about finished objects, works in progress, some Christmas knitting. I know in the last episode I said I wasn't doing Christmas knitting, but then it gave me the idea to do some Christmas knitting, so I'll be doing that. And some stash enhancements and gifts and some designing things. So welcome and welcome to all of my previous subscribers and my new subscribers and I want to say an extra special welcome to all of those teenagers that watch this podcast. I know there's quite a few of you and it's come up in a couple conversations recently that there's there there are quite a few teenagers that watch my podcast. So welcome you guys and uh, I hope you enjoy the show. You may have noticed I got a haircut. My hair was quite long but very thin and brittle and it looked, it was so thin at the ends, it looked like I was starting to go bald almost. So I decided that I would get a haircut and make it look so much better. And it feels so much healthier, it feels thicker, it looks so much better. I feel like, you might not, but I feel like it does. And I also got it dyed darker. So this is a chocolate brown color that uh, they added to my hair. And it just makes, makes a huge difference for me and I'm just, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. So I'm going to start off with works in progress. Um, I ha do have some works in progress. I know last episode I said that I wasn't going to do any Christmas knitting and that was just lies. It was all lies. I didn't think I was going to do Christmas knitting and now I have decided that I'm going to do Christmas knitting and I've started with a bang and right now I am working on a pair of socks and these socks are from, the yarn is from West Yorkshire Spinners and I purchased this yarn a couple years ago, two years ago I want to say, and I'd skeined it up for the sockathon that Amina and I did but I never got around to knitting these ones. So I just cast them on and I have been knitting like crazy with this yarn and you are going to see I do have some finished objects in this but right now I'm working on a pair of socks I'm turning the heel as we speak on one of them and here's the other one and it's 64 stitches and I did a toe up sock I haven't done toe up in so long so I've just been enjoying doing some toe up socks and it means that I don't have to do the Kitchener stitch which is a lot of fun. Um, and these ones are knit with 64 stitches. This yarn is a very rustic yarn. It's 100% wool. So it's not one that can go into the washing machine. Um, it's one that will need to be washed by hand for sure. But I'm really enjoying knitting with it. And it's a very good, um, like mindless, mindless knit. And I'm using the Fish Lips Kiss Heel, but I have modified it. Um, it's, it's it's quite a bit different than the actual Fish Lips Kiss Heel. I've I've changed it up quite a bit, but I like I like my version. Um, and I do a different kind of short row, so that is coming along, and I am definitely enjoying it. Uh, and yeah, so I had. Uh, two skeins and I separated them into um, four different balls so I split the split the skeins into four and I've just been working two at a time uh, toe up and I'm using these are actually uh, Addy turbos um, and I'm really enjoying them I knit one other pair of socks on them and I really did enjoy using them. Uh, I'm usually a high, high, a sharps girl and these are just, I'm just really, yeah, I like them. I've got no complaints about them. So yeah, I'm definitely enjoying them. And they are living in this cute little bag that was given to me um, by, from Longview Creations. And thank you so much. And it's their vacation trailers. And um, if you've watched the podcast for a while, you know that I have a vacation trailer that I've done up in like turquoise and red and yellows and stuff. And this color right here, the gray is actually, it's a shiny silver part of the fabric, which I really, really love. I dig it. So that is what, what those are living in. And 
definitely that has been my nighttime knitting recently and I'm so much enjoying it uh, at the on on the last in the last episode I said I wasn't going to be doing Christmas knitting and then I decided that I would knit a pair of socks for everybody and a sweater for everybody so that's just goals I don't know if I'll be able to do it I'm just gonna work towards that I already have a sweater put aside for somebody that I knit earlier in the year and um, and you guys have already seen that in an earlier podcast and I've also started a sweater this is for one of my girls and this is a new design that I'm working on and I'm still playing with it so this is this is very rough I'm just yeah I'm just playing with it it's some color work and it's a sweater and so this is this is it this is the body of it and it's color work and it's got this great large print panel in the front and it's got this cool um, like just alternating color on the sides I'm knitting this out of Barocco Vintage yarn because it's great for going in the washing machine and I'm very happy with how it is turning out it will it'll when I block it those stitches will even out a little bit more which will be which will be good um, my stitches are fairly fairly even except for where this is this is jammed into the knitting but yeah I've been enjoying this immensely and I've kind of scrawled up the pattern um, I've written it up as it is right now it goes from newborn to size 50 inch chest um, and I am I'm still working out the details because because of the different sizes some don't have this panel along the side and some do and I just I haven't decided what I want to do about that if I want to make sure that each one has that panel or or not um, I just yeah still chewing on it still working it out uh, and this one I actually might turn into a cardigan because uh, this daughter in particular really likes cardigans so that could be that I'm just going to finish knitting it up first get all the other ones done and if I have time to turn it into a cardigan I will if not and she wants it a cardigan after I give it to her then I can always change it into a cardigan it's it's very easy to do that with with this pattern it's it's pretty centered so that is on the needles and that one I started pretty much after the podcast after I podcasted last and it's yeah it's doing very well and the colors are just black and white uh, and I do have some more works in progress do I I have more works in progress but nothing that I'm like currently knitting on right now uh, so the things that I'm working on are socks and sweater and so I'm just going to talk about now is let's get into finished objects this is going to be a, a quick a fairly quick episode I feel like um, so finished objects I finished the socks I was working on last time and they are knit out of the colorway I couldn't remember last time but I know it's biscotti yarns in this Constantinople colorway so that is that yarn and I picked it up in Victoria when I was there. This yarn is so lovely. I enjoy it so much uh, and I have a fairly good chunk of the skein left so I might knit another smaller pair of socks with it. I can usually get a pair of full-size socks and a pair of ankle socks out of a skein so um, yeah well we'll see if I if I have enough to do that. I might just put it in my spare uh, spare yarn drawer and it can just live there for a little while I feel like there. Oh, this is the French heel it's the heel flapping gusset and it's 64 stitches knit on a 2.0 millimeter needle which is my go-to sock needle so if I don't if I don't say that with other socks then that's just my go-to I don't I don't use a different size usually so usually if I use a different size that's the I'll talk about talk about it so those are done and they are going to be going into my 
sock drawer. Very excited about those. Another finished object is... Now these ones don't have the ends woven in yet. And the reason they don't have the ends woven in yet is because I haven't gotten around to it. But I'm counting it as a finished object because you probably will not get to see them again because once the ends are woven in and they're blocked, then they'll be getting wrapped up for Christmas. Just a sec. I dropped one. So this is again West Yorkshire Spinners and yarn and it was knit on 2.0 millimeter needles and I knit this pair of socks. Do, do, do. They definitely need a, a blocking. So that's one pair. And here's the other pair that I finished. And yes, they do definitely need their ends woven in. And I did the Fish Lips Kiss Heel. And these are both pairs are done. Toe up Fish Lips Kiss Heel with my uh, modifications and just alternating the yarn so that the kids know which socks are theirs for Christmas. So I think these will be given to them on Christmas Eve is what I'm thinking. So yeah, so they they don't know about them. I've kept them very hidden and I've knit on them at nighttime. So, so that is good. Um, and another finished object is one I'm wearing and one that's behind me. So this is a new design that is coming out and it is called the Peacock Shawl. And you can see it back here and here as well. I'm wearing it and it's so squishy and cozy and just very, very comfortable. And that one I've worn a ton already. It's just, it's such a nice thing to wrap around you, especially outside in the winter. And it's, and it's very, very cozy. Uh, it's a brioche stitch and a seed stitch section. It is with my tech editor right now, so we're working on it together uh, and doing the editing, and then I will look for some test knitters. It probably won't be out till January just because uh, everybody's knitting Christmas things and, and it's the end of the year and that sort of thing. So I'm thinking it'll probably be out in January and uh, I'm really looking forward to it. And so this one is knit out of poppy yarn. It's all poppy yarn. None of the colors have a colorway. It was just in a package and it was actually called Peacock. So that was my inspiration for the shawl. It's fingering weight yarn and it's held double. And it just, uh, it changes through from one color, you start at this end and then you go all the way through to the last color and it just kind of blends through to the to each color. Uh, and so this one is like, it starts at green and then it goes all the way up to this beautiful blue and there's purple in there. And the one that I'm wearing is knit with a whole bunch of different yarns and it is a great stash buster. It takes five skeins. And this yarn, just a second. So I'll go through the yarns that this is knit with, starting at the starting point, which is the bottom. And this gray is knit out of Isis Fiber Arts in the stone flower colorway. And then, and this is knit so that you don't actually need a shawl pin. It's knit so that you can just tuck the shawl in through here and it just makes a beautiful little detail. So that's the stone flower colorway. And then it goes into the, goes into the gray and purple. And the purple is actually a color that was dyed by me. And so it's not, it's not actually available. Uh, it's, it was just one of my fun skeins and it's, it's a cashmere merino uh, blend. And then the next color it blends with is another purple blend. And it's uh, Marianne's Sparkle. And it is in, it's by Smith and You. And it is, do, do, do. Merino wool, Stellina blend, super wash. So it's 84 merino and 16% Stellina. And so it's just got a lot of, there's sparkle in there. It doesn't, 
the sparkle's not translating very well, but it's very sparkly yarn, and I love it. And then this is going into, this is mixed with a red that is by Prairie Dye Studio. And this is 80% merino and 20% nylon in the real gar colorway. I don't know if I, the sorry, the purple here is in the nebula colorway. I don't think I mentioned that. And then this is the real gar colorway in the red here that it mixes with. And then uh, the next red that it mixes with, which is the red on the end, is another one that I dyed, which is a cashmerino blend. And so it goes to those two reds and then this red. So what I did is I kind of took colors that um, were in the same family as the next color or had a color that was in the previous one to go into the next one. And so that's, that's that. And then it has this beautiful seed stitch section in the middle and brioche on the outside. So with this, you will never, with the brioche, you never have to brioche purl. It is all just brioche knit. And the only time you have to purl is with the, um, the seed stitch section in the middle. So, and it is so comfortable, it is so cozy, and it wraps so nicely. So I'm, I'm just enjoying every minute wearing this, and it's the Peacock Shawl, and it should be available in January. Once it's available, I will put the link below this video, and I'll put it below the video when I tell you that it's live as well. So that is... That is that, and I, these did go fairly quickly, and they have been done for a while. Uh, this one I just finished weaving in the ends, actually, right before I started recording, but they have been done for a while. They've been done uh, since, that one has been done since before my last episode. I just couldn't show yet because I wasn't quite at that stage to, to share it with you yet. So that is, that is my finished objects. And so now I'm gonna go into uh, some stash enhancements. Um, the first thing is I was sent this beautiful, beautiful gift from Daydream Yarns. And she sent me some minis. And there's a few things in this beautiful bag. Um, it's lovely baggage. So she sent some mini skeins and a full skein of yarn and has said that I can send you guys one or two or whichever. So they are stunning. They're so beautiful. I think these two go together so well doing something with that as the base and these as the accents would just be amazing. It just gets all of my it just inspires me so much. This yarn is so soft and is so beautiful. This one is the Sea Glass Gradient. And they're each 10 grams, which is 36 meters, which is 39 yards per skein. And so it's a total of 60 grams, which is 216 meters. And these are... Do, do, do. Mm-hmm. I do believe these are all 100% wool, so they're so pretty. They're just, I love the gradient. They just look so beautiful. And this one is the Shelly base, which is 100% wool and 360 meters, 394 yards. Um, and it's called Wine O'Clock, which is fabulous. That depth of that color is just so Stunning. And it is very, very soft. It's not, it's not an itchy wool at all. At, at all. <laughs> and it just, it matches my lipstick almost. It's more, it's, it's uh, more purpley than, than my lipstick, but it's so pretty and definitely one of my colors. I don't know if you can, you can tell at all. <laughs> 
It's so pretty. So if you are interested in getting some beautiful mini skeins, then definitely go check out her shop. And it is, she is on Etsy. There you go. And this set here is a one of a kind. So this is not one that is, she's repeating. So, and this one's a set of four. And then this one, look at those together. It's so pretty. So, uh, yeah. So if you are interested in going to her shop, go over there, give her some love, check out her yarns. Definitely, definitely soft and not itchy and beautiful and look at those colors they're just so so pretty there's a little fluff on there and these ones I just love gradients so so much and there's so many patterns out there now for gradients that it's just so much choice so thank you again very, very much for these beautiful yarns. And um, one or two of these will be as a giveaway at some point. And yeah, so one of you lucky viewers is going to win one of these. Maybe I'll do that as the giveaway or that. I don't know. <laughs> They're all so pretty. The next stash enhancements uh, is because I am doing Christmas knitting, knitting Christmas sweaters. So there is way too much happening here. Way too much happening here. And I want to say this is all Barocco vintage because I, like most knitters, I love knitting with cashmere and silks and like hand dyed yarn uh, and I support, I support hand dyers as much as I possibly can and, and people who've watched the podcast know that, that I do do that. Um, but when it comes to knitting children's sweaters or sweaters for, um, for family members, I tend to go to Barocco Vintage. I love their color choices. I love the color continuity. <laughs> I love that it can go in the washing machine and it's not a big deal. And I know some people cringe whenever I say that, but it happens. It happens and it just needs to be something that won't shrink because I have, I have a 100% wool horror story to share with you guys. I don't think I'll do it today, but um, I don't know what I was thinking. Something went in the washing machine by mistake. And it was an oversized sweater for me, and now it fits my youngest perfectly. And it's felted, and it looks super cute on her, because it has way shaping and everything. <laughs> but yeah, it went into the I went into the washing machine accidentally and and I knit like I knit I wash when I wash because I wash my socks in the washing machine and I have some uh, super wash wool tops that I will put in the washing machine but I wash it on cold and like no agitation and that's how that went in and it was with a bunch of other stuff and so I didn't even think of it and yeah it came out a lot smaller than it should have been so Okay, so back to my Barocco Vintage. So this is a turquoise color that seems to be everybody's joy in my family. And there's another one. So I went and got, got enough yarn to knit five sweaters. But having said that, Three of the sweaters are for very little people, so it doesn't take that much yarn. Um, 
I think I think I got 800 yards, around 800 yards for each of the littles, and then um, then 1,200 yards for my oldest Helen, and and then I have yarn that previously existed in my life. So I'm sorry. <laughs> um, so I have some black because black is always a good time. And I've put some of these colors in bags, not for any reason except to just keep them together, to keep the um, dye lots together and different colors that I'm putting together together. So here's a light blue and a gray that's going to go together. And these two aren't going to go together, but I got these two so this is a pink and a light like sea foamy green which is beautiful and I just want to knit all of the color work with these this one is for my oldest she wanted mustard and turquoise so that's the yarn for hers and it's going to look stunning on her she's got very um, She's got very dark skin and a very um, olivey skin undertone, so these are just going to look beautiful with her complexion. And then I have this one, which is more green than it's showing up, I think. And then this one, which is like a purple. So yeah, I think I have enough of this one to do a sweater for myself which is totally my color. So it's going to be in my life and I love it. And so you can see that there's a lot of choice going on here. And I also have a basket of vintage yarn, Broca vintage that I already owned from previous color work sweaters that I've done. And yeah, so I just have this, this bin for other colors in case I want to use those. So that is that for me today, I do believe. I have a book I want to share with you quickly, and it is Alice Starmore's Book of Fer Feral Knitting, which is amazing. And talks about technique and just different patterns and how to add them in, weaving in ends, measurements, that sort of thing. It's a very, very cool book. This is not an in-depth review at all. I've just recently, um, just recently gotten this book, so I haven't spend, spent that much time looking at it. I just know already from the cursory glance that I've had that I'm really enjoying it. And if you enjoy Fair Isle Knitting, definitely take a look at this book. Even if you go to the library and see if they have it, uh, just go and take a, take a peek. It even has how to make pom-poms and tassels in here. Like there's just so many, so many different things in this, in this book. And it's, it's a fairly, fairly thick, thick book as well. So uh, I think that's it for me for today. It's the holiday season. So there's a lot of holidaying going on. Um, and I think, well, for knitting content. So now I'm going to go into Jibber Jabber quickly and just update you on what's happening with the house, which I talked about last time. So there has been no work done on the house yet. I have spoken with two different contractors. They've come and said that they would do a quote and then one of them came back and said no I won't be able to do that because I just time constraints I don't think I'll be able to get it done in the time that you need it done so he recommended somebody else and the other person came and he looked and we talked and um and he we discussed what what needed to be done and he said yes it looks good I'll be able to get you a quote next week so I waited a week nothing crickets and then I called him a couple days ago which is like almost two weeks from the time he was here and I said hey you mentioned that you were going to get me a quote and I haven't seen anything yet 
And he said, oh yeah, you were at the bottom of my list of people to call to say I won't be able to do it. And so now again, I'm looking for another contractor to do the work that we need done before the insurance claim can actually get going. So that's where I am. It's a little bit frustrating. There is still potential for water to come in. We've done some work to try to curtail the water coming in, but it's still, it still is what it is, I guess. And so I'm hoping that before it snows again, we will have um, the support all worked out and and the holes fixed. <laughs> but I'm, I'm not sure if that's going to happen even before Christmas. It might be after Christmas. Uh, and it's just one of those things that I just have to take in stride, I guess. So that's it. I'm hoping to get some Christmas knitting done. You guys are awesome. If you are doing Christmas knitting, comment below. Let me know what you're doing. If you've decided last minute like me that you're going to do some Christmas knitting, let me know because I know I'm not the only one who decided last minute that that, that should be a thing. Um, and I've been, because I've been knitting so much, I've actually been listening to audiobooks and um, and I watched um, Seven Brides for Seven Brother Brothers is one of my favorite movies to watch at Christmas time. I don't know why, it just is. And... Um, and I've been listening to this audiobook. Um, it's the, I'm on the third one in the series. The first one, I was reading the paper book and I put it down and I picked it up and I put it down and then, and I put it down for over a year because it was very graphic and I wasn't, I don't enjoy graphic like, like that. Um, and so the series is Outlander. And they came out with the movie version, TV version as well, which I've also been watching that. But uh, I started listening to the audiobook and it it's just very different um, for me versus what like reading it or uh, watching a show of it, I guess. And so I've been listening to the audiobook. The first one was still a little bit tough to get through. There were sections that I fast forwarded through and didn't, didn't. <laughs> and then in the second book, again, there was a couple spots that I was like, zin, 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 past. And now I'm into the third book and it's quite a bit better. And I don't know if I'm just desensitized to a lot of stuff or if it's or if it is actually starting to get less graphic like that. But the writing is really good and it keeps me very engaged. The only thing I would say is that um, I'm at the point reading the book now where, or listening to the audiobook now, where I'm like, why don't they just stay home? Why stop doing all of those things that you're doing that are getting you in trouble and causing all of these other things? Just stay still and stop that. <laughs> So, but I guess there wouldn't be a storyline if they just lived happily ever after. So that's what I'm listening to. Um, and also, uh, the place I work is, um, it is, uh, we, we help with um, people who need a place to stay quickly and um, helping also people who are dealing with homelessness and um, that sort of thing. Uh, but a lot of times the people that we are helping have children and it snowed and got cold here really, really fast and before we were even expecting it to. And we are in desperate need of hats and mitts and scarves and socks and that sort of thing. And I know that we're not the only um, sort of group that is that is in, in need. And I'm not saying send all of your things to us. But maybe if, if you're thinking about other people this holiday season and you are looking for an opportunity to, to help, maybe find a, a local shelter and um, donate a hat or, or socks or mittens or scarf. It doesn't have to be hand knit. Um, it's always nice if it is because a lot of like in our situation, a lot of the people that we're dealing with have never had thought put into, into them even. 
So they really appreciate those things a lot more and they just have this gratitude when um, when people are thinking of them in that way. So I'm going to put a link below if you're interested in, in sending anything to uh, to our to where I work um, but if you are far away please please don't worry about that please just find somewhere local that could maybe use a little bit of support maybe donations or maybe a little bit of your time um, it's that time of the season and for people who are struggling it's even harder and and even some of you watching this could be in that situation so I just want you to know that um, that like my personality is I'm I'm a helper so so over here I'm helping the people here and I hope that there's enough helpers that watch the podcast that are uh, moved enough to get moving and and maybe um, donate some time or or whatever you can to people this season who might need somebody to care a little bit about them and what they're going through and so that's it for Jibber Jabber for me. That's my podcast for today. Thank you so much for watching and spending some time with me. I appreciate every single one of you. I have some things coming in the new year and I don't want to... I'm not going to go into it because I tend to change my mind. <laughs> so if they come out, then there they are. Thank you so much for joining me again. And I hope you have a beautiful day, a beautiful weekend. Happy Vlogmas to everybody who's Vlogmasing. And I appreciate every single one of you. And we will see you again next time. Welcome to the Fairy Little Podcast. I'm Marsha, also known as Fairy Little, and this is my podcast about knitting. Today we're going to be talking about finished objects, works in progress, some Christmas knitting. I know in the last episode I said I wasn't doing Christmas knitting, but then it gave me the idea. <laughs>